Hey everybody, welcome to the Man Leak. I'm John as always, and uh, I hope you all had a good pre-release weekend. Pre-release weekend was up on us this weekend. Ether Revolt is out in the wild, not quite released just yet, but uh, we all had some fun playing. I, of course, was at my local game store here in London, Ontario, Canada, the Gamers Emporium. If you are in the area, if you're coming through the area, make sure that you do stop on by. It's at Wonderland in Oxford. It's a little bit hidden. You're going to have to go into the parking lot and around the back of the building, and you'll see it. You might have saw it there uh, as we were looking out the window. We were uh, across the street because the store is relatively small and our pre-releases are the biggest in the city. We had 62 players. Uh, during round one of our event. Absolutely crowded space. Uh, our second biggest pre-release that we've ever had. We did have a 64-person one uh, just a few sets ago. We had plenty of door prizes, not to mention the actual prize support. There were uh, all kinds of stuff. It's not just magic cards. We had a dual deck up for prize release. We, of course, had the absolutely gigantic Oath of a Johnny available. We had a Star Wars Yoda umbrella. The handle was a lightsaber handle. Very, very cool. Uh, some comics, some sleeves, some deck boxes, some binders, etc. Tons of stuff. Totally random door prize entry. So uh, make sure you do check out the uh, the Gamers Emporium pre-releases if you're ever in the area. And of course, we do F and M. We do Tuesday Night Modern. I think we do some night modern <laughs> we do commanders on saturday we do cube now and then and we do a, a very successful sealed league uh so yeah pre-release has uh come and gone i did two i did one on the saturday and one on the sunday this footage that you just saw was from the saturday event uh i will go over my pool i will go over my deck i will go over uh all of that for saturday all of that for sunday it was overall a, a relatively fun uh weekend uh saturday unfortunately didn't go great as we'll talk about in a little bit um this format does seem a little bit swingy just like kaladesh did in sealed uh, i imagine the draft will be significantly better I think there are a lot of really, 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 really powerful on commons, and if you don't open them, I think you're at a serious disadvantage, making this uh, a little bit of a princely format in the sealed aspect. Draft, who knows? We'll have to see. I think in draft, you're going to be able to uh, pick up those powerful on commons, because of course... Everybody can't play every color, right? Anyways, we're going to uh, step on in to my first pool and see what that looked like. All right, so you saw a little bit of the pool there in my uh, super fast deck building uh, bit at the end of there. Uh, this is the white that I had, and the white looks pretty good. Uh, I've got Fairgrounds Warden, double Caught in the Brights, double Dawn Feather Eagle, although I don't know if you ever really want to play two. One's good. Uh, Airdrop Aeron Aeronauts, which is much better than I thought it was going to be. Console Shield Guard, and then if it falls off a little bit, Propeller Pioneer is fine, Eddie Trail Hawk is fine, Ether Inspector is bad, Inspire Charge is only good if you're going wide, and unfortunately this was literally all of the white in my entire pool Still, it definitely made me consider playing white because, come on, double cotton the brights, so good. Up next is the blue. This, again, is all of the blue that I had, and uh, it was just flat out bad. Thriving Turtle, Vidalcan Blademaster, probably some of the best cards here, along with Hinterland Drake, which is probably the best card here. Trophy Mage, I had nothing to grab unless I wanted to grab some implements. Metallic Rebuke is fine. Wind Ra Windkin Raiders is fine. And the rest is just mediocre, if not bad. Efficient Construction, Negate, Ice Over, etc. Blue was my first instant not playing it color. Next up is black, and black, of course, immediately got my attention because Herald of Anguish was hanging out there, along with a Daring Demolition, an Ether Poisoner, a Die Young, which I think is fine enough as a, uh, a minus two, minus two spell if you get extra stuff. Cool. Unfortunately, it fell away after that. Uh, Renegade's Getaway, Diabolic Tutor, Fretwick Colony, Mind Rot, a pair of Fourth Bridge Prowlers, which, no, I still don't agree they're that good. Uh, I was playing, spoiler alert, a Chandra's Pyrohelix, and not that often did I have a target, and that spell can do two damage. So fourth bridge prowler, I'm not super happy about. And then Malfus Squad and Alley Strangler, which are fine, and a night, mar night market aeronaut. But unfortunately, black was not looking like a uh, a heavy color that I could play. And splashing Herald of Anguish and Daring Demolition didn't sound like a great idea. Red was up next, and it was looking in a similar uh, kind of state as black. We had Free Jam Regent, my promo, carry Zev, and then it falls, falls off a little bit. Chandra's Power Helix, a Thriving Grubs, Invig Invigorated Rampage, and then it falls off a whole lot more. Double Siege, Modification, Precise Strikes, which are fine, Ravenous Intruder, just mediocre stuff. Again, fantastic stuff that quickly drops off to not really a solidly playable color. And then there was green. 
There's one card missing from this pile. That was commencement of festivities because it didn't need to be involved. I played every single card in this picture except for Ether Herder. Uh, prey upon, great removal. Uh, not great, good removal. Let's go with that. But there was a Scrounging Bunder, uh, an Ether Storm Leopard, Druid of the Cowl, Servant of the Conduit, Wild Wanderer, at, uh, ramping stuff, a pair of artifact uh, kill spells, uh, a trio of rares, two of which are extremely playable, and one of which uh, less playable. Let's say that. Anyways, green immediately was obviously going to be one of my main colors. And of course, that was going to let me ramp a, ramp a little bit. Off in the gold, unfortunately, there's a whole lot of blue, a whole lot of black, some white stuff that was not really going to be that easily splashed for, as powerful as most of these cards were. And then, of course, we had the artifacts, which was a huge amount of my cards, and they were bad. The artifacts were miserable for the most part. You can see three different implements plus a puzzle knot. We've got double night market guard, torch gauntlet, foundry assembler, filigree crawler. Uh, luckily, there was some good stuff. There was a renegade map, a prophetic prism, a treasure keeper. Very, very nice. An iron league steed. And then some other stuff like a uh, Narnam Cobra, Welder Automaton, uh, and an Aetherflex Reservoir because that's a thing. So this was one of the most mediocre pools I've seen, and in fact, here is all of the removal in the entire pool. Red had nothing but a Chandra's Pyrohelix. Black had a Daring Demolition, probably one of the best, if not the best, uh, removal spells in this pool. And a Die Young, which is all right, I guess. Ice Over is mediocre. Prey Upon's decent. And of course, those three very good white spells that just weren't quite supported. And now just before I show you the deck that I ended up with, I do want to show you one more thing because I don't want you to think that I'm completely crazy. Here is all of the ramp and fixing that I played. A renegade map to get whatever land I needed, a prophetic prism to draw me a card to make whatever mana I wanted, a servant of the conduit to make whatever mana I wanted, a wild wanderer to make whatever mana I wanted and ramp me along with the servant, and a druid of the cowl to ramp me in green. I'm not crazy, but let's look at the actual deck. Here it is. Here is the monstrosity that is this green and then red and black deck. Uh, much more red than black and black splashing for two tumble black pip spells. But let's take a look at the uh, the drops in order. In the one drop slot, just like my Kaladesh pre-release, we had Ovia Pashiri, who is amazing. We had a on, which is very solid, and a Renegade map, which would help me do the uh, the frankly BS uh, greedy stuff that I was planning on attempting to do with this mediocre pool. Two drop slot is uh, basically where most of my deck is. Thriving Grubs, Druid of the Cowl, Scrounging Bunder, Servant of the Conduit, Nardum Cobra, Monkey Lady, Green Wheel Liberator, uh, and then some removal with Pyrohelix, Die Young, a Natural Obsolescent, an Invigorated Rampage, and a Prophetic Prism. So many two drops. I did not have a problem playing early stuff. Three drops, much more sparse. Ether Stream Leopard, which is amazing, and Appetite for the Unnatural, which of course I think is one of the best main deckable artifact removal spells uh, in the set. Off in the four drop slot, we had Treasure Keeper, which was amazing. I love that card. I will first pick that card in a large number of packs. Wild Wanderer for the fixing slash ramp Iron League Steed and a Daring Demolition, which I was kind of splashing for basically, although with all the sources I had, it wasn't terribly splashing. In the five drop slot, I did try Aid from the Cowl. Aid from the Cowl worked when I had Revolt on. Unfortunately, being in sealed, I didn't have a great choice of my Revolt enablers. I had the map. I had the, the Scrounging Bunder. I was able to throw servos and stuff at my opponent, and they were either going to take damage or get something off the top. Uh, I got my Free Jam Regent off this. I uh, got my Demon off of this. I got lands off of this, and the lands come in untapped. Um, yeah, this is going to be good if you can get an actual, you know, repeatable sort of revolt enabled deck in draft. I'm going to keep an eye on Aid from the Cowl. Uh, I think it can do some stuff. In the six drop slot, we had Free Jam Regent, which was amazing. I frequently swung in with this thing for 10 in the air. Solid card. You should never not first pick this in a pack. And then finally, I had Herald of Anguish. I don't know how good Herald of Anguish is because I played it twice and it died immediately. I think it's good. But it's going to need to live longer than it ever did in my matches. And so, yeah, that's my greedy, greedy, greedy three-color deck with uh, multiple pips in black. Uh, yeah, 
it wasn't a great pre-release for me. My first match, I did quite well. I won in two. Uh, I was able to build up, uh, made a bunch of servos and constructs with Avia, and uh, won that match pretty handily. Match two was, again, pretty okay. I Both games had Free Jam Regent down one turn early, and both games made it a 10-4 to immediately finish the games off. First two matches, I thought my deck was mediocre and I was going to lose, and there I was 2-0. and oh. And then match three, I lost. And then match four, I drew 12 of my 16 lands because I was playing 16 lands in this deck uh, because I had so much uh, fixing and ramping and etc. And uh, yeah, that was uh, kind of unfortunate. And then unfortunately, I lost again and again to go two and four with this mediocre deck which is about where i expected to end up i don't know what place i ended up but unfortunately was completely out of prizes uh yeah i definitely could have gone white white would have had the better removal choices but i would have missed the herald of anguish i would have missed the daring demolition which is much more uh uh, powerful removal than the caught in the headlight or caught in the brights were um yeah, my pool really didn't support much. The lack of removal was very telling. And frankly, the lack of powerful on commons was telling. Uh, a few times I was up against the Untethered Express, and basically I had to have natural obsolescence or appetite for the unnatural, or I lost that game. Uh, I did in fact die to siege modification on a console's dreadnought. No, I don't think you should ever do that. Um, but if you're hoping to just get lucky and win a tournament, it might work. But you're also probably just as likely to lose that tournament. It's kind of like playing Infect in Modern. You don't super want to think and you want to win a lot of games fast and lose a lot of games fast or maybe slow. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting format. I don't know exactly what I can pull, if I can pull anything, frankly, from uh, from this first pre-release, I think the draft's going to be totally different. But let's take a look at my second pre-release. All right, so Sunday's pre-release was a little bit smaller, only 22 people as we were playing in the store rather than the, uh, the venue across the uh, parking lot from the store where we can fit a lot more people, but still 22 people crammed into the store and we opened up another uh, set of pre-release kits and I went and sorted all my cards and uh, I saw my rares and I wasn't super happy. But here's what my white looked like. I had SRAM's Expertise and Master Trinketer, Trinketeer, which is a pretty great combo right then and there. Felidar, combo, or Felidar Guardian, I'm just so used to talking about it with a combo um has some great utility gear poor osprey uh the trio of removal that i had last uh, uh pre-release uh, yesterday pre-release and could not uh actually pull off a pair of countless gears renegades aviary mechanic and alley evasion uh nothing to super write home about here beyond the removal and the expertise and trinketeer but you know still totally fine up next in blue, and I do apologize for the glare a little bit, it's really hard to take a picture of a lot of magic cards with any sort of lighting. Anyways, we had a confiscation coup, which I was super happy about. We're of Invention, which I don't super care about, but maybe I'd have some good artifacts. We'll see in a little bit. Uh, Bastion Inventor, Pair of Shipwreck Mores, Reverse Engineering, um, a couple of other things. Hinterland Drake, Windkin, Windkin Ra Raiders, Riders, Raiders. I'm going to have to learn all these new cards. Um, but in general, just not a ton of stuff that was great, but there could have been uh, some blue in this uh, for sure. Black was looking really sorry. We had a gifted etherborn. Woo! Uh, an iron ironclad revolutionary is okay. And then not much. A pair of subtle strikes, some vanilla creatures, Fen Hauler, Harsh Scrutiny. Black was basically instantly cut uh, with so few cards, so shallow, and just meh. We're out on black for sure. Red was up next. You can see my promo there was Pia's Revolution, which is awful, but I did have a Free Jam Regent again, and I knew how good Free Jam Regent could be from the previous day. Spark of Creativity, Chandra's Revolution round out the uh, pretty solid red up there, uh, and then, of course, it falls down a little bit. Para Spontaneous Artist, Carrie Zev's uh, Expertise was another rare of mine. Um, Wrangle, Siege Modification, nothing exciting going on there. Some stuff pulling me into red, but not quite enough to really uh, uh, push it out. And then, just like yesterday... Totally stacked green. We've got Blossoming Defense, High Spire Infusion, Pima Outrider, a pair of Lifecraft Cavalries, a Thriving Rhino, Riparian Tiger, Narnum Renegade, uh, Kajur Skeed Sculptor, again, pair of Druid of the Cowls, uh, both the artifact removals that I really like in an unbridled growth. Green looked pretty solid. It was the deepest color by far and was certainly going to be my primary color. 
But would I go with blue or white or red? What would I go with? Well, the gold didn't really help me out. I had a Renegade Wheel Smith and a Restoration Gear Smith. Uh, neither of those color pairs really looked like they were going to work out. And then I took a look at all of my artifacts because, of course, they help you build your decks, right? Utterly, utterly, utterly wrong. My artifacts were horrible. I had five of the automatons, the uh, the red one being probably the most playable if you're being aggressive, uh, the blue one if you're scry if you're being slow and wanting to scry a whole lot, but generally eh. Uh, two of the implement implements and one puzzle knot, a pair of eager constructs, one foil. The turret, the schematic, the walker, the crawler, the terrible train, mobile garrison's fine. Uh, ornithopter just to rub it in, and a cobra. Cobra is probably the most reasonable, most reliably playable card in this entire pa in this entire pile, unfortunately. And that's kind of one of my problems with this format so far, with Sealed specifically, is there's so many bad artifacts, and they take up the colored slots in your pool, you can end up with really, really terrible pools if your artifacts are not good. That being said, I don't think that has any impact on draft, and I'm still super looking forward to the draft. Anyways, here's the deck that I ended up with. I did, of course, go solid green, playing, again, basically every single green card in my pool except for uh, uh, Hidden Herbalists. And I did go with the white because of the SRAM's expertise, the Master Trinketeer, and the three removal. Blue was tempting. Red was vaguely tempting. Uh, but this seemed to be the most consistent to me. Let's take a look at the uh, individual slots. Up first, in the one-drop slot, we had the Narnom Renegade, uh, Blossoming Defense, Alley Evasion, LE evasion and unbridled growth. Growth uh, just to enable revolt because I did have the cavalries as well as the renegade. Uh, not that I ever really cared about enabling re uh, revolt on the renegade. Uh, Alley evasion again for revolt plus just combat trick because I felt I was going to need it because the deck seemed exceedingly fair. Blossoming defense, ditto. Two drops again were a little bit stacked, but not quite as much as yesterday. Two drool to the cowls for a fantastic ramp to uh, get me ahead of my opponents early enough, I hoped. The Cobra, the Lone Artifact, uh, Aviary Mechanic, Seed Sculptor, and uh, uh, Obsolescence and High Spire Infusion in the Combat Trick slash Removal Splot. At least today I had some three drops. I had Rhino, which was great. Fairgrounds Warden, which is solid. Osprey, which is good. Trinketeer, which is very, very nice. A pair of the Cotton and the Brights. Appetite for the Unnatural as well. Four drop slot, I had the Outrider and the Pima Guard, or the Pima Outrider and the Felidar Guardian. Guardian was great at bouncing the Outrider, as well as bouncing the uh, the Cavalries, which we'll see in a second, to self-enable Revolt. Uh, I bounced the Narnom Renegade sometimes just to enable Revolt. Tons of tricks with Felidar, Felidar Guardian, I like it quite a bit. And SRAM's Expertise, which uh, if you cast Master Trinketeer with the free ability, which I did a couple of times, it is a beating. Finally, in the five-drop slot, we had a pair of Lifecraft Cavalries and a Riparian Tiger. So that's the deck. I built it, and I wasn't super happy. I had the two Caught in the Brights and the Fairgrounds Warden, but that was literally it for removal. Uh, I did not have any Prey Upons or any, um, uh, the other one, the Monstrous Onslaught, any of the awesome green removal. Uh, I didn't have a Thopter Arrest. I didn't have any of that. I was playing an exceedingly fair deck. I basically had to hope that my opponents did not gum up the board and that they weren't doing things that were unfair. But I made it. I made it. I 5-0'd. I won every single match with this deck. Uh, I was up against some scary stuff. Uh, there was a deck with two Ridge Scale Tuskers, which I still cannot believe that's printed at Uncommon. Uh, I beat a Pain Train. I beat a Tezzeret. I beat all kinds of uh, incredibly unfair, super-powered stuff simply by being consistent. Super, super consistent. I would play my creatures, play removal, and attack. They would play a creature, I would play my second Cotton the Brights, I would attack. And then I would just hope, because hey, I was out of removal at that point. Um, but yeah, getting the uh, the Lifecraft Cavalries out nice and early with the help of the Druid of the Cowls was fantastic. Uh, they were probably the all-star, uh, even with SRAM's expertise in Master Trinketeer. I think the Cavalry just did the most work. And Osprey. A lot of decks, of course, in Sealed cannot deal with flyers, and a single 2-2 flyer won me uh, a single game by itself, basically. Uh, yeah, I, I was not super happy with the deck from a Sealed perspective, just because I know how ridiculous Sealed pools can get. And typically, in a Sealed event, those ridiculous pools are the ones that are going to win. Uh, thankfully, I think most of them stumbled enough that they kind of fell out of my bracket, and uh, that's kind of how I was able to sneak through, I think.
Because, boy, there was some unfair stuff. There was three uh, Ether Stream Baskers. There were multiples of the Untethered Express. There was multiple Ether Sphere Harvesters. Lots of ridiculous stuff that I would have had some trouble, for sure, dealing with. Um, but through pair, through matches, through opponent stumbles, through luck on my side, I did manage to 5-0. and Although, caveat, I did draw in the final round with Dan so that we would guarantee ourselves seven packs each instead of one of us getting eight and one of us getting six. Uh, but, yeah, it was overall a, a fun pre release event. I'm not super looking towards sealed for Ether Revolt. Um, I think the artifacts do just really unbalance your sealed pools at time. I'm going to be very excited to get away from an artifact set as far as sealed is concerned. Draft, I'm super excited for it. You can pass all those garbage artifacts around the first time, pick your colors, and then pick up those artifacts on the wheel. Uh, yeah, I'm super excited for draft. I hope you all are as well. Now, what I want to hear is in the comments below how your pre-releases went. How did you do? What did you play? What were the crazy things you saw? And what were your feelings on the format? What do you think about Ether Revolt Sealed? What do you expect for Ether Revolt Draft? Let me know anything you want to let me know down in the comments below. Just before I wrap up, because I have gained well over 1,300 subscribers in the past week, for anybody who's new, don't go away. There's more Ether Revolt content. Tuesday, there will be a crack a pack of Ether Revolt. Uh, Wednesday is not going to be Ether Revolt, but it's a chaos draft, a paper chaos draft, uh, where we draft everything from, uh, I believe it was Return to Ravnica through Kaladesh. So make sure that you do check that out. And then, of course, this weekend, I will have a full paper draft recap of Ether Revolt. I will open a box of Ether Revolt. Tons more content, so make sure that you do stick around. And if you haven't subscribed already, click that subscribe button. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at the Manaleek. That's L E E K, like the vegetable, not the card. You can find me at twitch.tv slash the Manaleek, facebook.com slash the Manaleek, and patreon.com slash the Manaleek if you want to uh, become a backer there. There's a number of reward tiers. And uh, whenever you hit $60, if that takes you one month, 60 months, 120 months, if you're donating uh, 50 cents a, a month, whenever you hit $60, you get yourself the Mana Leak playmat. I will ship that out to you as soon as you hit that lifetime milestone. But that's going to wrap it up for me. Please click that thumbs up button. It super helps the discoverability, which uh, we discovered the past week with all those new subscrib subscribers. Welcome to all those new subscribers. I hope you do stick around, and I will see you all next time.